Hello everyone. In this video, we'll try to understand API, which is nothing but application programming interface, right? So before we try to understand what is API, let's let's see some cases where we need API. Right? We'll get some decent idea. So in our previous video, we already discussed what is microservices and advantages on microservices over the traditional approach, right? So one of the main advantage here, advantage here is like if you're developing an application, right? So you can choose multiple programming language for for based on your use case, based on your domain, a subdomain, right? In in case of uh, uh, e-commerce for payment gateway, you can choose Java for analytics, you can choose Python, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now at the end, all these application need to talk to each other, right? Do you really think a Java can directly talk to Python? No. A Python can directly talk to Java? No. It's not possible, right? So. That is where we have APIs. So APIs are used to, you know, it, it will make a connection between two or many, two or three or more, whatever, right? It will use this to make a connection between applications, right? Mm -hmm. So now we'll try to understand in a better way. Let's say you went to a restaurant, you ordered something. Typically you'll talk to a, a server, a waiter, right? So he'll take your request or order and he'll go to the kitchen and he'll give he'll submit that order to a chef and maybe chef can tell you know it can take 15 minutes 20 minutes what are the time and he'll come back to you and tell you hey sir you know for this order it will take so and so time right and maybe once it is ready he'll go back to the kitchen and get it to you so this guy who is sitting in between you and the kitchen is a middle guy right who takes your request and serves your request right or maybe you can simply say who serves your request right <laughs> and Maybe the same case, uh, I'm not, I don't want to go to the restaurant, but I want to order it from my home. So maybe I'll use some apps like Jomanta, Swiki, Panda, whatever it is, right? And here, if you see, maybe you can consider it as a server for now, right? First, what I'll do, I'll ask for the list of servers to the server, list of the restaurants to the server. And this server, what are the logic you write in the server, will fetch the list of restaurants and it will give it back to you. And maybe you can select one of the restaurants based on any of the parameter of your choice, right? And you'll order something. And again, the request will go to the server. And this server, what it will do, it will place an order and it will tell you back, hey, for this order, this much time it will take. Maybe at this once so time, it will reach your place, right? And now whoever is sitting in between this uh, two different parties, you know, in the restaurant case, if, I mean, we and the kitchen, in this case, again, we through Jamoto and the backend service, right? These guys are typically called APIs. So APIs will always sit in between the two applications, two or more applications, right? Which will take a request, process your request and send the response back. In this case, what Jamoto is doing, it is taking a request. What is the request? It is taking, hey, you know, we, I'm asking the server, hey, give me the list of restaurants. It will take the list of res restaurants and send it back to you, right? And this guy is an API, right? And what are the logic we write and deployed in this particular server is called API, right? Now, hope you understand what is API. API always sit in between two different applications. In our case, a Jomato application, and maybe a database, right? Which always helps to serve a request. Now, hope you understand what is API and what are the places where we use API. Now let's try to understand the different protocols available in APIs. This is, oh, okay. Maybe before we talk about different protocols, uh, better we'll try to understand what is XML and JSON. XML is nothing but extensible markup language. And JSON is nothing but JavaScript object notation, right? These two are very important, right? Why it is important, <laughs> you'll understand in some time. Both this XML and JSON is used to describe your data. And if you see, this is an XML, right? What it says, maybe I'm sending some note to Vishateja, from Teja with data, heading is remarked and body is so and so. This is a typical XML looks like. And if you see JSON, maybe if you are from programming language, don't you think it looks like a dictionary? Yeah, technically it's a dictionary. Maybe you can say JSON is something like, in my experience, we can say 
a dictionary that convert to a string <laughs> right right so now why we need this why we need xml and json if you see xml and json is a software and hardware independent right a tool it's it's a tool xml and json is a tool that is used to store and transform the data between the applications now going back to our previous example right we said we have a choice of selecting different programming language at the end they have to work together i said okay using apis api is the way where you know two languages or two different source systems can talk to each other but okay api is a medium to talk right like we have teams zoom meetings go to meeting which is such a medium right to connect to different people right and i'm actually from andhra pradesh if i speak telugu do you think the people from other states and country will understand no i need some common language that's where english right if i record this video in telugu maybe only people from andhra pradesh or people who know telugu will understand it but not others right as i'm recording this video is in in english that's why most of the people may understand right similarly uh, and as 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 english right english is actually you know the common language right so that's why mostly everyone will understand the english where in case of programming language we also need some kind of common language right some common format so that any programming language or any system will understand it like what we have english the similar way the programming world should also have some common language maybe i'm stretching a little bit <laughs> but yes so now you understand why we need xml and json right xml and json is used to transfer the data between two applications the two application can be a front end application and the back end maybe a jomant application at <laughs> the back end maybe a two different programming languages now hope you hope you understand why we need xml and json right i'm repeating myself again xml and json is the format that is used to transfer the data between two application via api so api is a medium to connect to between two different systems and xml or json is the way you transfer your request and get your response back clear okay now hope you understand the xml and json why we need it now let's try to understand some protocols we have there might be many protocols but this three which you see here rpc soap and rest are widely used protocols when you see rpc this is uh somewhere in 1998 the first version is xml <clears throat> right so before json we have xml xml is the only medium where you can transfer the data between multiple or two different you know applications and then somewhere in 2005 rpc also introduced json you might have seen here right did you see what what major difference you notice between the xml and json structure here if you see xml you have a open tag and close tag right where in case of json we don't have that <coughs> right so you save lot of data i mean lot of space if you see right so i have the open brace sorry what is this less than symbol right or greater than symbol right and i have opened it here closed it here twice right i have two two times from two times heading two times body two times right do we think this is like additional you know information that we are passing where in case of json did you see there is no repeating not only one time two only one time right somehow it is saving some data right because when you are transferring the data between the systems even the size of the data matters because if the size is big it will take some time to transfer it also depends on your network bandwidth right and json is good in that and moreover parsing the json using any programming language is very easy because it's a dictionary right where in case of xml you need to this is a root node this is a child node you have to travel inside so json is widely used right okay now coming to the point and soap is somewhere around 1999 which actually supports only xml soap is also one of the widely used protocol which supports only xml and the rest rest is nowadays it is a widely used you know api protocol right which is somewhere in 2000 it supports json xml plain text awesome it supports 
most of the formats when when it comes to the implementation rpc and rest is easy to do i mean implement it where in case of soap it is difficult so actually i started my career in in integration world where we used to integrate different applications where we mostly use soap based you know it is little bit difficult to implement right and in rpc we have a request message validation in soap we have but rest we don't have so what is this request message validation a simple example right for example in currency not in currency maybe uh, in price i'm expecting a number what in case if they send a, uh, you know uh, a string in stuff 10 if they send ten 10 right i don't want to accept that and that's what that's kind of validation is possible in rpc and so but not in rest right and when you see rpc and rest has wider community where soap has a moderate community right and now when it comes to security rpc and rest has moderate security but soap has a very advanced security and that is why if you see soap is soap protocol is mostly widely used in traditional you know systems like crm erp if you talk about sap erp oracle erp salesforce they typically use soap based protocols to communicate between the systems right and even if you see single sign on might you might have heard about single sign on right single sign on also use soap protocol mostly and the payment gateways most of the payment gateways also use soap protocol because as we seen it has advanced security right <coughs> and where in case of rpc we go for rpc for high performance aps and micro services when you talk about rest services we also use as services in micro services right and also most of the public apis which is accessible to the public are in rest <coughs> right so in this playlist we majorly focus on the rest services with json okay so this this is about this video hope uh, you like this video and you understand what is api why need it xml why we need json and different types of api protocols hope you enjoy this video the very important thing is please don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you